This tube is sealed at the end that's closest to us. At the far end, there's an audio speaker. The tube is half filled with water. As we send different audio frequencies through the speaker, not much happens. Except once in a while, the water springs to life. This shows us that we've created standing waves. The tone goes from the speaker, travels down the tube, and is reflected back into the tube from the sealed end. But that reflected sound wave is mixed with a new sound wave coming from the speaker. At various points in the tube, the sound waves add up, creating a powerful energy which disturbs the water. In other areas, the waves cancel out, so the water isn't affected at those locations. As we increase the frequency, we get more standing waves when the frequency becomes twice as high as the last one. If this tube were big enough for you to stand inside it, imagine how loud the sound would be at these points. Meanwhile, your friend, also inside the tube, but some distance away from you, might not hear anything at all. Your friend would be standing at what's called a node, while you would be standing at an anti-node. This standing wave problem has to be taken into account when we design recording studios. Since this phenomenon means that two people standing in a room may hear very different things, many studios are designed with angled walls to minimize the standing waves. As well, the walls of a studio are lined with sound-absorbing material to decrease sound reflections.